Oh my God, the truck won't start. What the f is going on? All right, so we're gonna go over this truck here today. I got this customer's uh, six liter Ford here. It's a 2005, but this is pretty much gonna cover uh, cover most of the years of the six liter, uh, how to diagnose the issue. So what we got going on here, I believe, because the customer's complaint is it won't start when it's hot or it's a very long crank. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have an ICP leak, injection control pressure leak. And uh, let's get the scanner and plug it in though and see what we got. Okay, so we do a code scan and we've come up with no codes present for the uh, engine control module or the powertrain control module, I should say. And uh, so basically there's a lot of common issues with these trucks and like I said before, I'm pretty sure we have an ICP leak here, but I'm going to go over with you guys on today on how to diagnose that. So what you want to do is you got to know a little bit about these trucks. These need to see 500 PSI in the oil, high pressure oil system just to turn the injectors on. So yes, there's fuel, obviously you got diesel going into your injector, but you also have oil going into your injector on these six liter Fords, same as the 7.3, it's a slightly different system. But uh, on this six liter, we need to go and monitor our ICP pressure first and make sure we're actually getting 500 PSI and we need to confirm that the sensor is good. So we're gonna go out here and we're gonna first go into the data display. And what we're gonna actually monitor is, okay, we're gonna go drivability, just whatever, bypass that. I'm using an Apollo D9 snap-on scanner, but you know, you need just something you can monitor live data with pretty much to do this. Um, we don't need to see all this stuff, so I'm just gonna go in. Oops, hit the wrong button here, hold on a sec. There we go. So I'm gonna go into drivability, I'm gonna deselect everything. And all we really need to monitor is our, I want to look at our high pressure. So we're going to go down to ICP desired, ICP pressure, ICP voltage, and the injection pressure regulator. We want to know what that thing's doing. And then we're going to go here. All right, so that's what we want to see. So that's good what we're seeing on our ICP sensor voltage. You want to see about a quarter volt when your key on engine off, you want to see a quarter volt. That means your sensor is pretty much reading what it needs to read. Now, when we crank it though, we should see the truck start when this thing hits 500. We need to see at least 500 PSI. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to crank the truck over and we're going to monitor our injection, pre injection pressure regulator. We never want to see that hit 85%. That means it's trying to make full pressure. It shouldn't have to do that. So let's just see what we got here. As you can see, our injection pressure regulator is hitting 85%, which means it's trying as hard as it can to build pressure. And our ICP is hardly making pressure to start 286, 288. That's not enough to start the truck. Okay, so we're here on the passenger side of the truck. This is where the injection control pressure sensor is right there. So when we were talking about that quarter volt thing and monitoring our ICP pressure, that's where we're getting that information from is that sensor right there. And that is a port into our high pressure oil system. So what I have here is this fitting. This, we can take, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that ICP sensor out down there and we're gonna screw this fitting in. And all that is on there is a shop air chuck and into this, uh, it's an OTC fitting. I'll put the part number in the description, but we're gonna screw that in there and we're gonna inject shop air into the ICP port and we're gonna listen for a leak. The common issue on these, cause this is a, this is a 04, late 04 and up engine is we'll get, uh, we'll get a leak on the dummy plugs or maybe an injector o-ring under the driver or passenger side valve cover. The other thing I have seen is on the back of these, there's what's called an STC snap to connect fitting where the pump is. You have to take the turbo and a bunch of other stuff out of the way of the manifold to get at that. But uh, I'm sure that's not the problem because he's had the update done to this truck, he told me. But I mean, and if maybe the update was done wrong, that could be an issue. But we're going to inject to shop air into that port and we're going to pull the oil cap off and have a listen under the passenger side. And if we don't hear anything, you got to wait a minute or two when you plug this in. But because uh, it can take a little bit to push the oil back and find the leak. But we should hear it under here. Under, if we pull the oil cap off, we should hear maybe a leak. Or we're going to listen on the uh, driver's side 
it may be necessary if we have a leak on the driver's side to actually pull the valve cover off to hear it because the problem is there's no uh, oil fill like we have on this side it's all blocked off so let's put the let's put the fitting in and put shop air in and see what happens okay so I just injected the shop air and I can already hear we have a leak under this passenger side valve cover so we're gonna pull the oil cap off and there we go we got a leak I don't know if you can hear that but we have a leak under this side you can see the steam coming out of there so we're gonna take this valve cover off and go for it so you can hear that actually I can hear it pretty loudly I don't know if you can through the camera but there's definitely a leak here you should be able to hear it if you have a good enough leak if by if it is on the other side you should hear it now if you don't hear a leak and you're not having a you have a no start like this when it's hot or maybe it's all the time I would definitely what I do is I go after the ICP valve the injection pressure regulator I should say and that injection pressure regulator is actually I can't really show it but it's in a bad spot you got to pull your coolant bottle out to see it but there's that shield right there you pull that out of the way with the camera to focus you pull your coolant bottle out of the way you pull your air intake out of the way and you get that shield off and your ICP uh, injection control pressure regulator is down under there and you can pull that out and usually what happens is the screen on it the screen on it ends up getting uh, messed up or broken and then a piece gets inside that regulator and it holds the regulator open and it won't allow the system to build any pressure but usually when that happens you won't see much pressure at all in this situation we are seeing a few hundred psi which tells me that we more so have a leak and this truck actually will start when it cools down if you have an issue with your regulator usually it won't start at all before you take this hose off here one thing i could say is make sure you kink the line and let the pressure bleed off because if you don't you pull that right out of there you'll end up shooting oil all over yourself because the pressure is going to have a sudden release so i recommend just we're going to take this charge air pipe out of the way i recommend that you spray your your clamps down to help get don't bind the threads up and something else about uh taking these clamps off it's always good to remove it on the accessory side on the charge air side not on the pipe and obviously oops i sprayed the wrong one there I want to spray the one down here because that's the one I'm going to take off because the more that you screw with the ones on the pipe side this is a known issue for this pipe to get screwed up and keep blowing off you don't want to do that so it's best to just take it off on the turbo side take it off down on the intercooler side don't screw with the clamps on the pipe that way you're not going to cause an issue come down and we're gonna undo that one just like that threads come off it all comes off really nice and easy when you put a little bit of lubricant on there really helps those come off if you bind them up you got to buy the clamp and it can be uh can cost quite a bit of money so just like that pull it off if you're doing it with one hand like me you might end up dropping the clamp there we go, we're gonna pull that out. So this wires for your alternator, it roots around and goes on to here, your positive cable for your battery. I usually take that, I take the plugs off the glow plug controller and the ICP, and I just take it like that, I tuck it up in behind the alternator, and that just keeps it all up out of the way so we have better access. Now we're gonna remove our glow plug controller. Now the tranny dipstick, I don't pull it all the way out. I just kind of take it off, it's a stud. I just kind of tuck it over the way out of the way here boom that way you don't have to pull it right out just leave it in there so now we're going to go ahead we're going to take all the 12 mil uh bolts off the valve cover for the main part for the hard reach bolts on the glow plug controller and the dipstick and stuff i use this eight inch extension with a swivel and a, a 10 mil and then for the valve cover bolts i'll use this for as much as i can get the back ones I'll take the extension off and just use the wobble and the uh, socket on the ratchet and then we're gonna have a couple down there in behind the heater box below the heater box there that we can't get a socket on for that 
If I use this flex head uh, blue point ratchet, there's the part number, B-O-E-R-M-F-1-2-A. It's reversible, it's flex. I'll show you, you can hold it down in there just like that and you can get all the bolts out and it uh, makes life a lot easier. it on there get it on crack it loose. makes life a lot easier and now for these other ones back here I don't use the extension I just use the wobble and the socket get it on there loom is kind of in the way sorry guys for the wobbling but get that on there take it out nice and easy and it's good too because you can angle this for the ones at the back even i can still get this on there i just use it as a, at a bit of an angle with the wobble and i can still get on to the back one there even and take it out and i can even get at the lower one i just need two hands and i got to reach in there more but you get the idea now for the ones that are down there below the heater box where you can't really get at, I take this wrench, I reach from below the heater box like this, and I just get it on there, and then you can crack it loose. And that's why having this flex is, is so nice to have. It's gonna just crack it loose, and it's a ratcheting wrench too, so I can ratchet it and get it out of the way. This one's a little jammed up, it's old, but you get the idea. You can just reach under there, get that one, and then reach down further and get the one at the very back. Okay, now all the bolts are out. Before you take this valve cover off, just be very careful. What I do usually is take a little bit of compressed air and blow it down along the seam of the valve cover and stuff. You gotta be very careful. It doesn't take much dirt to plug the, the screen up on the IPR valve. And if you plug that up, you're gonna have a no start or you'll have continuous issues running issues, not starting, whatnot. So be very careful when this valve cover's off, you don't want to get any dirt under the valve cover. So just be aware of that. Okay, so you can see actually down here, I have the shop air hooked back up to it again. We're leaking from around the back area here. Focus, we got smoke coming through there. So it could be the stand pipe. It could be an injector O-ring or it could be the rail. So we're gonna go down a little further and see if we can figure out where it's actually leaking from. So this uh, rail's gotta come off. We're gonna take it off. What I use, uh, there's a couple bolts again that are down there that are harder to get at. I'll just use this uh, quarter drive uh, flex ratchet. It's a T30 Torx on the end. So I'll crack those ones on the bottom loose. You don't wanna go in there with a uh, like an air ratchet or a Milwaukee ratchet electric or something like that because you don't want to strip these off you want to make sure you get them so I use this and then for all the other ones besides the ones on the bottom I'll use that but I'll just put an extension on there it makes it a little easier crack them all loose before you before you start uh, using a, a power tool on it or anything like that so we're going to pull all the torques out and then we're going to pull our rail out but uh, don't pull the rail right out because you will make a mess you want to just take the bolts out pull it straight off if you can and then just kind of let it hang there for a little bit and that way all the oil will drain out. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So this is what I mean. I got the rail off now and I just kind of left it inside the rocker house assembly still and I'm just letting it drip off and then uh, when you pull it out, pull this bad boy out of here um, to help minimize the mess. You just uh, Turn it up like that and then I usually just put it into a bucket or something so it doesn't uh, make a mess okay so this is what I found in this truck this oil rail here uh, is in the truck like this and we had this this one of the stand pipes where the oil comes in 
on this standpipe here, we have that O-ring right there. You can see it is blown out and it goes in here. So what happens is this goes in here. And there's another piece here I'm gonna show you. This is down towards the block. These are the, all the nipples that go into your injectors. That, we have another piece, it's right here. This goes down into your branch tube and then oil goes through this and fills this rail up and that's how you get your high pressure system. So this goes onto here like that and goes down into the block. So when it's sitting in the engine, it's sitting in there like that. So we had to pull this rail off regardless because when every time you unscrew that, that usually stays down on the block. So you undo that. When you unscrew that out of there, this piece here, the long tube will stay down on the block. So you have to pull your rail off and you just grab that with a pair of pliers or something and you can pull this out. It'll just pull it out of the block. So I'm gonna go down to Ford. I'm gonna get the updated kit. I got, they got a standpipe kit there. I'm gonna reinstall this rail, put a new standpipe in and uh, get this thing going for my customer. If you found this at all helpful, uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you.